Hi, this is Dr. Mark Sell, 47th talk, continuation of the 46th talk on a most unusual relationship between patient and analyst. I'm going to continue where I left off. I'm, I left off where I was going to talk about what happened with the court, dis, the courts and Dr. Lucas. So the family was very um, concerned about his safety, his welfare. So they had an idea that they would like to move him to a nursing home. Now, this is where he lived for so, so many years. We had his life, with, uh, most of his life with his Marie, his sur surroundings, familiar. So what would that have been like for him if he was moved to some place that was unfamiliar, disorienting, strange, objects dark, not around him? So anyway, there, was a, there is and was a man named Dr. Farrell Silverberg, and he was a colleague of Dr. Lucas a very, uh, very, had a very good relationship with each other, and he had himself appointed uh, by the court to do an equal decision-making uh, with, uh, with, with a family member. They decided that Dr. Lucas would remain in his house. Wow, what a joy that was. How lost he would have been if he wasn't. Uh, in. So that was the family's uh, idea. They were, in their mind, protecting him, but... Um, that kind of protection would not be good for him. So, so I continued with my videos of him, and uh, he brought in our walks and our exercises. So I was concerned, too, about any decision that was going to be made as on a mi misrepresentation of who he was and what his life was like. Um, because I felt like it was, I was one of them representing his life through the videos. His family visited him, but they had their own reality, and I think I was um, more, uh, had, a, had, an, had some of an objective uh, look at him. So, but one of the reasons I did the videos was because I wanted to make sure the world and whoever, whoever was interested could look into his life and see what was, what was from, from our perspective, what was happening. So they would see him eating. They would see him walking. They would see him going out and meeting people in the street. They would see him um, enjoying his cake. They would see him um, going to the restaurant and having fun and having a birthday party uh, with other people cheering him on. I also wanted and exercises, so I had, we did exercises, so he would stand between, uh, in the wall, between the, in the door, between, to hold his hands up, one hand, and he would lift up one leg and lift it up as high as he could, and then he would lift the other one as high as he could. He would do stretches with putting his hands up above his head and then on the wall, he, he, so that was keeping him fit. Also, he was being shown that he was uh, agile enough to do these things and also was, was taking care of in some minimal way uh, when I went to him to he could uh, build his strength up and do these exercises and we walked a lot too that was keeping him fit we walked in the house around a lot he still walked up those flights to get to his bedroom and down again that was keeping him uh, good exercise so in other words I wanted to make sure that no one could see no one could say that he wasn't doing well in his house, and that was very important to me and to him, too, so, yeah. And what I also continued to do was remind him of who he was, and he, he, he needed that reminder, and, and once in a while, I would jar his memory, like with Damien, you know, I would just say Damien, and he said, oh yeah, Damien, and, and from India. And, he would, and then Mary Lou came up and she visited us so people could see that he was having visitors and uh, that was being taped um, and how important Damien was to Dr. Lucas and both to each other because he treated them for such a long time. And I, re, I would remind him of, do you know what, Dr. Lucas, you trained so many people. You helped develop their minds in terms of learning about psychoanalysis. They used to come from Philadelphia to see you. And he said, really? Uh, yes, and they would talk about uh, uh, transference, they would talk about uh, the technique of modern psychoanalysis as compared to techniques of other uh, orientations. They would talk about 
cases with you, and they learned and they learned, and I was one of those that learned and learned to, with, with them. So I'm testimony of what you have done in your life. And sometimes he was very surprised because he didn't, I mean, I did all that, he would say sometimes, and I, here's where you went to school. Uh, you, you created an institute called the Institute for Modern Psychoanalysis. Uh, you, you trained there. You, some teachers uh, under, under you were teaching there also. Um, yeah. I reminded him of the classmates that uh, were in his class, like uh, the two Dans, I mean, maybe actually three Dans that were related. If you get that wrong, but yeah, Tom, Dan, and Dan. So funny, Tom, Dan, and Dan. Yeah, and many other classmates that I attended the institute with on a regular basis. I would remind him of. So he was he he was astounded because he had no memory of his life, what it was. I can't say he had no memory. We could jog some, but it was certainly. Um, his self-efficacy was increased by knowing what he did and who he was, at least for that moment. Maybe it would fade away, but for that moment, he had recognition. And of course, that recognition uh, slowly dwindled away, and not so slowly, too. Uh, it was very, very rapid. Uh, you know, in three months, from 2012 to 2015, it went from something to nothing. And the why I say nothing was that he, not that he was nothing, but he felt like he was nothing. He said he didn't recognize himself, and that's extreme change. You know who I am. I'm I'm not a person to trying to be jog his memory into. Yes, he was a person who did certain things in life, and many of them. And he had a life. He had a life with his wife, and I reminded him of Marie. And we, you know, he couldn't remember Marie, but I could jog his memory a little bit. That and she. She died, and uh, you know, a number of years ago, and his, you know, his children, uh, one boy and two, two uh, sisters, one brother and two sisters. That they, you know, he, he did all of that in his life, plus doing the practice, plus teaching people. So that's quite a life, Dr. Lucas. That's quite a life you had. It was an amazing life. Fighting in the war having on his resume the first thing that people could see. I joined, I joined the army when I was 17 years old to fight Hitler. Tact and courage. Yeah, he was a man, very tactful and courageous. And that's where I got it from. Uh, pretty tactful and are also courageous. Like that one time I went on to the, uh, <laughs> the Carson Daly show and I just did it, just did it because I wanted to do it. I did it because I was frightened and I wanted to do it anyway. Yeah, so it worked out all right. Uh, but he certainly helped me become a courageous person who could walk into the office and say, I'm not, I'm, I didn't say anything, I just didn't lie down. My, uh, my, my defiant, uh, but also strong self too, and that worked out fine because he just handled it so well. I reminded of, of those things. We still, we still, um, we still, you know, had dinner there. Um, if Elizabeth was around, she was always around, but sometimes not, not when I was. So I usually didn't eat there, but at least I could bring him up some, uh, some of that cakey. But the cake, eventually, he wasn't interested in either. He just, he was depressed, of course, and lack of interest in. Uh, apathetic and apathy, you know, that's, you know, how could you not be when this was happening, happening to you in your life? And I could understand how difficult it was to, for, to be living with somebody with Alzheimer's, more difficult for the patient. It wasn't difficult for me. I mean, I was very sad for him, and it was crushing for me when he said, I'm not a person. This person who was such a person was not a person anymore. I mean, it's terrible. It's a feeling. It was, but you know, he, he he was all right with that. He's not all right with that, but he didn't he didn't like he, he don't cave in and give up. But I think in part part he did give up because he what what else can you do when you don't have that kind of facility to remember who you are? But he had he had me, Sharina, Elizabeth. 
uh, the man at night. So he had, he was in good hands. Yeah. So on September 7th, uh, I mean, not September, May 7th, uh, Lydia, Tat Nadia called me. That's right, the evening of, of, of uh, May 7th. She called me on the phone and she said, you know, Dr. Lucas is not doing very well. And um, uh, I think if you want to see him, you should come soon. So that, that night I came to see him, uh, May 7th, yeah, 2015. And I went into the room and he was, he was breathing like, it was just so labored breathing. Yeah. He couldn't speak. I talked to him course because I know people can hear you you know they may and it's worth a shot so I I told him that I loved him I loved you Dr. Lucas I love you and I and uh, I'll miss you and I stroked his head and I kissed him and held him on that last day it was you know it was three years ago and seems like it just uh, yesterday, for some reason. And I still think of him, about him all the, you know, not all the time, but I think of him sometimes. I wake up at night thinking, crying. Not that often anymore, but once in a while it will. And that's how much of an impact he had on me. So, so this is the end, in many ways, but the end of his videos, um, of him. I'm s yeah. Miss, I miss doing them, you know, and missing him. Yeah, so I'm going to sign off right now. And uh, if you are acquainted with Dr. Lucas out there and you wanted to email me, talk, um, as a colleague, patient, whatever, you can at marksell at gmail.com. And uh, you can phone me at 917-991-9113. And check the website, Cell. Dot com, and you could look for the videos of Dr. Lucas. There's a, actually a se separate pa playlist of all the videos of him, too. So you just go to the MarkCell.com pull-down menu, psychotherapy videos, and you'll find them all. So again, thank you. Thank you, uh, Farrell, and uh, the people that called uh, in to say hello about how their m colleagues were enjoying the videos. Kuchali, 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 I can't pronounce that name. I don't know, I have a hard time. Kuchali, Kuchali, Dr. Robert Kuchali. Yeah, let's have that cup of coffee that we talked about ha having sometime. Yeah, we can talk about, catch up with ourselves and also what what our different memories were with Dr. Lucas. Maybe three or four of them can get of us to get together and do that. That's a nice idea. Okay, so I'm going to sign off from now for now for uh, Therapy for the Heart, the YouTube channel, the 77th video on a most unusual relationship. Dr. Lucas and Dr. Sell. Take care of everybody out there. Thank you. Give a comment if you can with a Gmail account. All right, and I'll put it on Friends of Therapy for the Heart. Bye-bye. Right.